Okay, this is part two of the introduction to the KeyCloak project. KeyCloak Asylum has some support for cores. Uh, cores is a protocol that all modern browsers support. Um, originally, uh, browsers were only allowed to make uh, REST requests within JavaScript applications only to their originating web application. Um, they weren't allowed to make additional web requests, REST requests to services that are on different machines and different domains on, on your network. So what the CORS protocol allows you to do is uh, a browser app, a JavaScript app, can make uh, REST invocations to different domains on your network. In KeyCloak, um, KeyCloak allows you to validate web origins. It does this by uh, stuffing um, the allowed web origins within the, the the token that is obtained from the authentication server, so that um, when a user makes a REST request, it passes along the token, and the REST service um, looks at the web origin that header that's passed by the browser, and makes and then mat tries to match it with um, information within the token to validate that that particular user is allowed to um, make that um, cross domain request. Um, this the, the allowed web origins uh, are managed and set up within the administration console and you can do it per user, per application, and per OAuth client. I'm not going to demo this though. I don't have a nice demo for it at the moment. Another thing that KeyCloak supports right now is OAuth grants. OAuth grants works works as follows. Um, you can have a third party uh, application on the network, and um, basically what this party third party wants to do is access REST REST services on behalf of you. So what happens is is when the browser visits the third party website, the third party website um, redirects the browser to the authentication server where the user has to log in. Uh, the third party then is granted a token which it can use to invoke on a REST service on behalf of the particular user. Let's uh, let's have a let's show a demo of that. So if um, we go to this third party application, and what's going to happen is is when I when I um, click on this pull data link here. When I click on this pull data link here, uh, I'm going to be redirected to the KeyCloak authentication server. And the first thing I have to do is I have to log in. So I'm going to log in as bburk again. Enter in my one-time password for my iPhone. Okay. And after I enter in my credentials, um, since uh, that third-party web app originated this this request, this login request, um, I'm going to have to grant it permission to actually uh, access um, REST services on behalf of me. So what this page is saying right here is saying, hey, um, the third party web app is, is requesting access to user privileges for you. I can either um, deny this request or I can, I can accept it. I'm going to accept it here. So once I accept it, the, uh, the OAuth client is um, gets a token that it can invoke on the backend REST service to tame, obtain a product listing. OAuth clients must be registered with the uh, KeyCloak administration console. Um, one interesting thing, interesting thing about OAuth clients is scope mappings. Uh, scope mappings are permissions uh, OAuth clients are allowed to ask for. Let's um, go to the KeyCloak administration console so you can see what I'm talking about here. Uh, if I click on OAuth clients, you see um, our, we have our registered OAuth client third party. I click on that, this information about the OAuth client, and I click on this link scope. If you look at um, the scope of the third party OAuth client, you see that um, it has an assigned role of user. What this means is that the third party client is allowed to ask for user permissions for that particular user. So if I if 
this third party OAuth client was not assigned this particular scope, it would not be allowed to ask for user permissions. So actually if I turn that off, if I assign no roles to the third party scope mappings, um, you'll see that the OAuth client would not have per permission to access uh, the RESTful data service that obtains our product listing. So let's log in again as B. Burke. Start the OAuth grant process here. Um, we'll click login. You'll see you see that we didn't have we didn't go to the grant page because um, uh, there are no permissions that the third party web app is allowed to ask for. So what we got here is that we have a fail to access exception from um, our OAuth client that it got from the data service when it transferred that token to access that service. So we got a for, forbidden um, error message there. So if I go back to the administration console and change the scope for the third party OAuth client to allow it to ask for user permissions. Now when I um, start the OAuth grant request here Um, I'll be asked to allow third party to have user privileges, I accept it, and now I can get the product listing. Okay, those are the major features we support right now in Keycloak. Um, really all that stuff I demoed there. Let's talk a little bit now about the Keycloak ar architecture. Here's a picture of a architectural diagram of um, how Keycloak is set up. Um, Everything in Keycloak is driven by uh, HTTP requests, REST requests, and this is handled by uh, by JAXRS services. So um, we have a, an admin service, a token service, and account management service. The token service is for you know logging in a user and generating tokens and that sort of thing. The account management is the user account management page where they can you know uh, change their information about themselves, change their password. The admin service is for the um, the admin UI. So all those are driven by uh, REST requests and dispatched by JAX or REST services on the server side. Um, the admin console um, is a JavaScript based application and it uses the Angular uh, JavaScript framework. framework. So um, Angular is running inside the browser as JavaScript and um, this JavaScript application makes REST calls to the admin REST service API. For the token service and user account management, um, we do things a little bit differently. Just in case um, the browser uh, for the user doesn't have JavaScript enabled, um, we do everything via, ch via old, school, um, old school traditional web pages. So the token service and the account management pages are backed by something called FreeMarker. FreeMarker are, is a template engine which it, you can use to generate uh, web pages on the server side and send them back to the browser. So there's no JavaScript at all um, when logging in using the login pages, the regist registration pages, and the user account management pages. Uh, Keycloak also has a pers persistent storage um, SPI. And um, it's a very simple abstraction, just a bunch of um, interfaces that model our uh, data model. Um, and we have various plugins for this uh, persistent storage SPI right now. We have a, a plugin for a simple JPA backend, um, a simple Mo Mongo backend, and we also have one for PicketLink. Um, going forward, we'll probably uh, um, almost solely support PicketLink because PicketLink is going to provide us some ability to do um, federation with um, LDAP and Active Directory deployments of um, existing uh, um, security models that um, customers might have. So that's the basic overall architecture of um, how Keycloak is set up. What about the f what about Keycloak deployments? Um, Keycloak is going to be able to deploy it in various ways. Uh, 
one way we want to be able to deploy it is via OpenShift. Um, and right now we have an OpenShift Quick Start, so you can easily uh, set up a Keycloak server that's available on the internet that you can use um, to secure your social apps and that sort of thing. Um, if you when you when we release Keycloak, you'll be able to download it as a um, appliance as well that will be uh, be able to run right out of the box, hopefully, with very minimal configuration. Um, we'll also provide it as a wire if you want to deploy it in existing application server deployments and um, as jars, separate jars as well. Um, we got a bunch of things on the plate for Keycloak in the future. Uh, we want to be able to add federation by integrating with Picket, Picket Link in deeper ways. Um, we want, to, we want to be able to do device management so that you can actually register like devices that are allowed to um, take advantage of the Keycloak authentication services. Um, we want to be able to set up um, an OpenShift cartridge so you can really, really easily um, set up a Keycloak authentication server on an OpenShift uh, a cloud deployment. So really, those are the things going on. So right now, we're kind of in a milestone release phase and alpha phase, and still a lot of things we need to, to clean up with Keycloak, but that's what's going on right now. That's about it. Um, hope I didn't mumble too much in this presentation here, but uh, um, looking forward to seeing you guys on the list or and downloading and trying out Keycloak. Thanks.